Greetings, greetings, market rebels. Welcome to this week's sector situation video. It's Sunday, May 21st, 2023, a little bit after 1.30 p.m. here on the East Coast. My partner, Ryan, I think is still working on the market outlook overview, which should go out shortly if it hasn't already. And uh, we're going to dive in on this video into the uh, sectors, as you'd expect. Just have to take care of our trusty disclaimer first and then we'll take care of our trusty intellectual property rights notice. And then I'm going to just pause briefly here on the, this is what I covered in macro measure. That was my program for the week. So if you wanted to get into that kind of stuff, uh, I'll just leave it there for another second. If you wanna pause and take a little snapshot or whatnot, so you can follow along if you go to macro measure, but some of naturally what I discuss in sector situation here will be uh, echoing the macro measure. And then here's last week's, if you wonder, well, what, what was up last week? This is last week's stream, as I'm calling it, because I don't really go directly according to script, but strip, script, excuse me, it sort of just streams out. So let's do the stop share so I can reposition and get this sort of out of our way. And then we can get started into the sectors and I don't think this will be too long today, but I think some we finally have some things we can discuss a little bit more than what we have been seeing, which is risk, you know, risk on, risk off type of thing. So let's get the share going on my main screen. Here's the grid of 12 that we usually start out with. And so from energy up here, right across with financials and Here's XLK, XLC, and you can just see the rest. And these are all daily charts with just a little RSI label so we can get a sense on where things are. And I think the major takeaways I have from what happened last week are that we still had the narrow leadership and mainly in the XLC and XLK. As you can see, that they're both either above 70 on the RSI or nearing 70 on the RSI. That's really where it was concentrated for the most part, not to say that other things didn't lift up a little, they did, but I think you could see that these maintain that role. And I think we did mention last week that if you wanted to go in where the strength was and there was more, you thought there'd be more strength or more strength started to develop, probably look inside of those, right? Those can find the components that look good and potentially go with those. So uh, they stayed that way. The other, <clears throat> excuse me, takeaway is that you could see that the staples fell a little bit there, XLP, and I've got a resistance line, short term resistance line on there. And then I've got this other line that I added here just to show the kind of breakout in discretionary. So discretionary did come back. That's definitely a little bit, in my book, a little bit of a sign of a little bit more risk on where they sold some of their staples holdings and maybe rotated a little bit into some discretionary names. But again, you'd have to really go through this to see which components contributed to that. And really, even Friday is you know, we we Friday's performance was somewhat of a reversal of Thursday's. And we have to see right. Most likely scenario would be come back towards this support level near it, just below it, just above it. Regardless, see if it can hold and if it can convert to possible support, and then go again, take another run towards the highs and see if we can get another leg. So that would be the most likely scenario, at least starting out with the test, right, of former resistance, maybe now support. Uh, and some of the other tech takeaways for me are that XLY, uh, I'm sorry, XTN and XLF up here, they kind of resized on me. I had the size better, but it looks like somehow I must have done something. But um, XLF certainly got a little bit of relief. Uh, the transports, which we believe are important, they started to do a little bit better. Uh, are these out of the woods yet? No, that's the issue, right? I don't think these are out of the woods yet. I think you need to see more from them. Uh, and even the other really important sector, which is XLE, that definitely had a little, little better of a week. It got through one really aggressive resistance line that we had, but now it's working its way towards the next one up. We'll have to see what happens there. But I, I'm I'm not really loving the fact that these, I think, important areas like energy, like um, the transports and like financials 
are just really not anywhere near where you want them to be. If you're a bull thinking that there's a really like a new bull run emerging, the leadership has been very narrow. That's been discussed a lot in the uh, Twitter sphere, I would say. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, just those key sectors for me are a big deal and they're just not working yet. Now, <clears throat> it doesn't mean, of course, excuse me, that we can get those, maybe we can get those going. Maybe they are just lagging and this tech AI hype is legit and it's gonna pull everything along with it. And I guess usher in universal basic income and I guess that'll warm the hearts of uh, Zuckerberg. Uh, but you know, the point really is that uh, I don't know, I'm not a macro analyst that way. I just, and I don't have the numbers, but I just feel like if a lot of, a lot of jobs are going to be eliminated through AI, I can see that clearly boosting company bottom lines for company profits, but I'm not so sure that uh, that's a really good thing overall. A lot of massive layoffs in some of the biggest companies um, could be good in the long run, uh, but maybe in the short run or intermediate term, that's not such a wonderful thing. Um, some things I think didn't really participate all that much, real estate being one of them, XLRE. You could see that healthcare, uh, nothing special. Uh, Basic materials, a little bit better, but didn't finish really well. You can see that there, XLB. And then XLI did, though. XLI had a nice week, but it did kind of pull back to below what I would call our resistance line. And utilities, of course, risk offish, right? They kind of got out of there. Now, interestingly, and we'll switch over to the main chart here, but interestingly, the KRE followed the the uh, XLF or XLF followed the KRE, but regardless, both of them had pretty decent weeks, but I would still argue that this is certainly not out of the woods. Here's your declining 50 in gold in KRE, starting to take that out, and then there's going to be some flat lines on the way up. But if it starts doing that, you could start feeling better about it, certainly. I just, we've seen this, right? This is still a low or high compared to here, compared to here, compared to here. So until you really get through the 50 and then, of course, take out at least one high, uh, I would still be leaning more towards I'm concerned at the very least. I think that for now, I think this is still mostly in uh, big picture, mostly in bull control with a little bit of a maybe respite developing for now. And I would leave it at that. A lot of people are saying the worst is behind us. I just, uh, we talked about it with Pete Najarian on, I think, Tuesday. I just don't think it is, uh, is my gut. And that's just from having traded through these things many times before, these banking problems that crop up. Um, it seems like they always try to explain it away, tell everyone there's nothing to worry about. You know, the old, the old uh, you know, don't pay attention, don't pay any attention to the man behind the curtain stuff. And then eventually there's even more fallout. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe my gut instinct will be wrong on that. I hope it will be. But at the same time, I don't think that's the case. Switched over to percentages again. Thank you very much, think or swim. So that's KRE right now. I think, yes, you can't really argue that it got a little bit better, right? But I still think it's still, again, still concerning. So that kind of is about the same really on XLF, which is again, another important sector. I think of all, if XLF and is flowing and certain things are flowing, that's a lot, especially you'll see that in transports, but these things don't look like world beaters yet. Like I said, maybe they get their acts together. Maybe they get pulled up because they eventually have to play catch up somehow and maybe more bullish action in the market, even though it's narrow, draws more money off the sidelines and maybe it has some people capitulate and uh, just start buying because they feel like they're missing out on too much. Remains to be seen, just certainly a possibility. But I look at that, I look at XTN, <clears throat> I look at XLE, and if I, if I thought there was some really wonderful bullish uh, epoch that we're on the brink of, uh, you would think this would do better. But then again, someone might argue, well, you know, AI is not going to require uh, all that kind of stuff. I don't know how AI does all that, but I'm again, I'm not an AI expert. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So I'm not sure how all that plays out, but 
Here's XLE, possible attempt at a little bit slightly higher high or at least similar to this clusters, cluster of lows. Maybe it tries to put something together. Definitely would keep the eye on the 20 there in light blue. That's your first big deal in terms of SMEs. And then next, of course, would be your declining 50 as well. So I don't think I'm all that enamored with this right now. I still think there's it's challenged, but you have to say that if it can <clears throat> take a few things out, Maybe there's more promise, and then we'll see what happens when it confronts these longer-term SMAs from the 200 to the 100, uh, <clears throat> if it, if and when that happens. But certainly, right, not going down, managed to <clears throat> participate in the hype, excuse me, last week. So th there's all those, uh, the transports, the financials, the energy, just, again, probably <clears throat> had a chance to really finish, had a rough Friday in transports. Didn't want to neglect to mention that, but hey, if it comes back down and kind of holds 20 in late blue or the 50 in gold, then okay, that's good. Maybe it'll start to it start to stick to the higher level of the range that it's been in for the last few months. And then, which it did here, which is a nice sign, so keep an eye on that. If they keep pushing things, it's nice that there's a higher low put in versus these other lows. That could be the start of something good. Uh, we said that We've said that many times in the videos we do each weekend, and often it's been the case. It's just something that you, I think you notice um, from, if you're new, you just start noticing that, that, that that final higher low can often be a good sign, one to keep your eyes open on. So clearly you have to take out the high there on 5.3 of about 74.19. But look, if it, it's got some, it's got a shot here, right? If it can hold above these SMAs and start to get back in the game, maybe it will. I think it's, that seems to me, though, like from what I've been reading, a pretty challenging space. Now, another super important area in my in my mind is the SMH. And this is one we had as the focus name of the week in Rebel Pit Pro, which I think it's now called. And this was fortunate. This The reason why we kind of uh, gravitated towards this, we thought we had a lot of good names on our hands that we were evaluating. But the reason why we gravitated towards this one was because maybe, right, it had broken out on Monday right there because we put we put the idea out on Tuesdays. But we thought, okay, well, this is pretty impressive. It's a pretty impressive Monday. We've been looking for this to try to do something for a while after this low, and it didn't there, and then it didn't here. And that can happen. I find that Ryan and I, the stuff that we have is often a little too early. In other words, it doesn't tell us just in time. It kind of starts telling us, a little too early and then the, the part that we have to really work on is being patient enough but we thought it could do something um and it didn't for a while but then fortunately i think we came back to it or at least we maybe skipped over the semis a little bit and then got back to them this week and it was a fortunate development and this really had a strong monday took out the 50 which put it above all the smas and it cleared out a few of those recent highs it was a pretty strong day <clears throat> so we we thought, look, this is probably either going to be the start of a legit breakout, which turned out to be, or this is going to be the real fake out here. And they're going to they're going to start sending this thing reeling down. So since we try to trade in both directions and we prepare to trade in both directions, fortunately, though, I think for most people, it worked out probably fairly well because people like to trade the long side. They're more comfortable. But the good thing is, right, that's a key sector. We, a lot of us know what's going on there with AI. There's a lot of hype. That's what gets you this kind of performance. Trend is still intact. All those kind of things. Uh, you got to give it its benefit of the doubt. However, right, there's always that however when you know someone's listing a lot of positive things. The positives are what we talked about there technically, but in the short term, this is overbought. You know, I think my heavy duty intraday timeframes are telling me this thing is, even after Friday is sort of, little mini pullback, this thing is overbought. Of course, there's always that caveat. Well, it can stay overbought and it certainly can. And NVIDIA has got the earnings coming up this week. So don't, you know, probably the biggest name out there right now <clears throat> in terms of what could drive this and drive the technology, drive the semis. And to me, it's got this potential, right? I could probably even take this line that I drew in here recently, and I could probably take that back further in time. And I could probably extend it and get a really good line out of it. If I might have to clip a few wicks to do that, but 
and I'll bring it down here. But if you look at that, that's a pretty, I'd say a pretty solid resistance line right there overall, just done on the quick. And if this thing overshoots and like it did in here and wakes it there, this could be right a spectacular next week or two, um, which could be, again, that would probably require the earnings to and forward guidance and all to be received well by a skeptical community. No, by a hype masters that love to hype things. Um, but honestly, you can't rule something like that, that out when this thing gets on a run. It has had major moves at times. Uh, not necessarily, here's a major move leading up to the uh, prior earnings, for example. And then here's a major, uh, major move, right? Post earnings. So this thing does have pretty strong percentage moves at times. Uh, maybe there's a pre-earnings run there. I think we have an idea that I put in for a potential pre-earnings run on this. Um, we talked about it in videos too, because it maybe is a big catalyst given, right, the zeitgeist that we're dealing with right now uh, with AI dominating that. So maybe you get this move that brings you up to this resistance line this week, uh, right? It could happen. So don't rule that out. And of course, that would move up SMH, that would move up uh, Qs, uh, XLK, et cetera. But the issue is, right, is it sort of overdone in the short term? Are the Qs overdone? I think both of them are. And even if it just, even if, I think if bulls are smart and they're often not smart, they are devious though, but they're often not smart about backing things off and letting them chill, cool off for just a day, day and a half. And then, you know, right, letting that sort of breathing happen. And then you try to re-energize in front of NVIDIA, maybe on uh, Tuesday, late Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then maybe you get your earnings and the thing really jams. And then that really lifts up everything. Could happen. We know that's just a scenario that you've got, to, I've got to mention here. But getting back to the semis and getting back to NVIDIA as a part of that, and just short term overbought. So I think you're you probably do what we probably could do here actually is just drop sort of like a uh, horizontal line on here for now. And I think the stock struggled, right? I'll get right about there. So, oh, I thought I double clicked. I guess I did. There you go. So maybe like around 130, 150, just to put a number out there, maybe 131 if you overshoot a little. You get through there, you come down. And then if you hold and start to go again, I think that would be good. But this is very vertical, as you could see. Uh, that that if we drew a support line under there, it, you could see the slope of that support line on this view would be pretty darn uh, vertical. And so that's the case in Google, which I discussed an idea that we have on currently in UOA Pro, I believe. It's something rare for me because I'm not a big fan of uh, fighting against uh, very strong trends, especially when there's hype associated with them. But you could see that this got out to the third standard deviation on <clears throat> relatively wide Bollinger bands set to a 100 period um, moving average. And so that to me just is very extended. Um, and the candle that was developing that day became interesting as well uh, to me. And uh, the UOA, of course, made it even more interesting. So given that things are overbought, even just a little bit of a pullback could be a nice opportunity, but certainly one where you just never overstay your welcome fighting against something that's in my book, fighting against something that's really strong and overdone because these guys have degrees of overdoneness that you many people can't even imagine. Um, but that those are some of the sort of highlights that we, we cover, um, the standard stuff we cover. We cover a little bit or a lot else, depending on how you want to look at it. And one of those things we like to do every week is really look at Besides those big four that I like, which are SEBI's, XLE, uh, XTN, and the uh, XLF, and we, of course, KRE is now part of that mix with what's happening. Um, but we do look at, thanks, Thinker Swim on that. Um, what we do look at, I'm sorry, Zoom, that was Zoom actually. We do look at uh, things like what's going on in oil. Okay, so let's try to bring up the oil the thinker swims going to share with us so it looks like we're looking at the uh oil future out there come on and you know th this looks a little better I, I would say 
that certainly looks a little better with the higher low put in and now working its way back up near the 20 there in late blue. The four recent highs are not too far above there. Then there's the 50. So looking a little better, um, you know, not right. You, in terms of taking a trade on it, you had, had a big move up Wednesday, kind of backed off a little Thursday, volatile move on Friday, back higher, you know, outside day effectively, right? Higher, high, higher, low. But I would wait, sure, if I would wait for that high right there right now if you're trading that. If it takes that high out, probably, you know, it'll probably try so close to get those highs taken out and then probably trade to the 50 for starters. And if it acts well and just slices right through the 50, then you've got the 100. So there's a couple levels to trade against there. Um, if it fails here again, though, right, you would be worried about if it can't hold this low, right, this level here. Thanks again, Thinkorswim, for switching me over to percentages. I was trying to just give us a price level in case you're interested in this one. But I would say, look, there's there's a little bit of a flat line, I think, right near there. I just call it 70 just to make it easy. 69.95, whatever. But that's the thing. You don't hold there, then you're looking at some extremes, right? And that would be that would not be good. I mean, how are, how how does this economy really go if energy isn't in great demand, right? How does it really go if copper isn't in great demand, right? Where these are important important parts or commodities, right, within the grand scheme. Here's copper as of right as of Friday, and that's. That's on the, the good thing we could say is look, it's on it's bl below or was below the lower Bollinger band, but it's just sort of dead and really closer right to multi month lows than it is the multi month high. So it doesn't seem like things are really firing globally here that uh, there's a big demand for copper. Um, and then finally, I can't for some reason I'm having trouble with the LB with the lumber futures. So I'm going to stay away from those. Um, I'm not sure what's going on there, but I'm going to go with just a lumber ETF alternative for now. Um, I, again, I only really check this stuff out here and there. And now, of course, I'm doing it every week and have been doing it every week for a while, uh, for over a year at least, or maybe even two years for these videos. But look, this, this, is, this is your one of the lumber ETFs out there. And uh, I mean, it, it's off the low, you know, that that's good. But and it's it's holding above some of the SMAs that we we keep track of, could get above the 200 without probably too much work, and that would be a good development. You'd start to say, well, that's encouraging, right? But is it anything really now? I think it's good that it bounced off the 50 and it's trying, but you still the jury's still out on that. It's still on the lower side of the, let's say the the, the quarterly range. Here's another one cut, same similar, right? You're closer to the lows recent lows than you are to the recent highs and you're still downsloping. So yeah, it's trying to put a little something together. I don't know what the correlation is between those two, but I would guess it's fairly high. But anyway, it's fine trying to put in a higher low. Uh, it could start working up, taking out this high. That would be a start of something maybe, at least maybe you take a run at the 200 in, in purple. But again, we have to wait for this to resolve. There's a triangle we, we can see it's sort of broke out, then left, lifted back up in there. So we'll wait and see what happens there. But certainly, right, it, I'm just in a general sense, it's low, much lower than uh, towards the lower end of the range and the, than the high end. So there's your kind of quick view on the commodities. They don't look so wonderful. Um, XAU, oh, <clears throat> this <clears throat> took a turn, which I was hoping for, even though I'm long a lot of the stuff. Um, not it's it's not as if it's doomed there is a gap no i'm sorry i thought there was a gap down there it's not as if this is doomed but this is certainly not looking as good as it had uh, you can see there's a little bit of weakness on this high versus this high there's your rsi down there let me just uh, enlarge that so on this high it kind of had a weaker weaker thrust right weaker momentum thrust and it's rolled over and I'm welcoming that because I want to buy more at lower levels. I uh, I wasn't happy about winning to on that. I really don't want to win on it anyway, <laughs> but that's another story. Um, but anyway, that doesn't look so wonderful. So I know there's a lot of folks that like to keep an eye on that. And I think it's a prudent thing to do. But yeah, I think right now, 
I think the long term is potential still there. I think clearly the bears have taken over in the short run. And probably the best thing we could say about it at the moment is that on some short term intraday kind of heavy duty intraday charts, this is starting to get oversold. It's just in the mid 30s on the daily too. And so yeah, that, maybe that maybe that leads to something. But you know, now that it's below some of the shorter terms and the 50, there's a question as to what's going on here. Uh, don't forget this still, and I think this will show up in case it doesn't, I'll show something else. But this kind of does show that big, big picture cup and handle that's there. So there's a lot of technical potential. That's a pattern that I believe in. I've seen that pattern work many, many times. Uh, so many, I think many more than when it hasn't too. So anyway, I, I like that. But right now, right, it's it's not being moved up. And if you're a bull, right, if you're a trading bull, you have to wait for some kind of a momentum shift. If you're someone who wants to hedge by owning some of this stuff, you can start to be a scale back buyer, of course, at any time and just buy a little scale back a little bit more, buy some more. But, you know, I would I would try to wait and see if this doesn't turn. There's a good chance, right, with the way it's acting, if it has just a little bit of a pop higher, gets rejected by the 50, let's say, and rolls over, it could maybe have to test the 200 again. So these are this is a very frustrating space for people. Uh, it can be very hard to trade this one, I think. Uh, there's a lot of suppression and manipulation that goes on in here. So that's for that reason that some people just really specialize in it. And uh, remember, there's even a gap all the way down here that my little oval there is <coughs> informing us of too. So I would actually be very happy if that were to happen because I'm really not in this for money making. I'm in this for positioning myself long term to be really hedged and then hoping to be wrong to having even felt the need to be hedged. Another thing we have been checking out is XBI. And XBI was, we caught, we were fortunate enough to catch some good stuff in XBI, which was lucky. Um, you know, we just happened to stumble upon it somehow, I forget how I came upon it. And then we started to notice that the technicals were starting to do better. But, uh, after not doing well for a while. But yeah, this one, it might have been in conjunction with uh, XLV or something like that. We were looking at it. But look, you know, this is a nice little intermediate term trend still. Uh, you've got to make sure it holds that 20 there in light blue. And it's kind of in the middle of the recent range between that low it put in on Thursday and the high it put in earlier in the week. So, you know, I would just, I, I think this is not at a great trading juncture. I think you'd have to wait for it to take out Friday's high to really think you could get maybe another shot at going, which could happen. You know, certainly could happen. Um, and on the downside, I think you may as well wait till the 20 there. But for now, you know, I don't see it as like, hey, there's a great technical setup that we're coming across just yet. It needs to do work in my book. Either way, if I were to enter this kind of an idea in one of our services, people would probably wonder well, why is the why is that why are these trigger levels that that this guy is telling me to focus on why are they so far it's just because of the complexion right now you know that just you have to in my book right you're kind of in a no man's land technically i'm not in love with this i see no momentum moving this thing up quite yet thursday uh it came back from the lows but still closed on a lower low and friday it tried to rally and got sent back to thursday's opening you know so I don't see enough there yet that, that I'm impressed by to, to say, here's a really aggressive trigger because now if there's news out, that's a different story, of course, but uh, I just don't see anything at the moment looking at this chart now. Another thing I will touch on too are, this is normally macro measure, but that was long. I said I might mention it, I think, in here had the intention to. And dollar, right, that started to do a little bit better and it's now testing the 100 after getting above it. So you need to see if this can sort of hang around in here, hold, and then try to go again. To me, that really wouldn't be good for the market, but neither would TNX, the rates rising on the 10 year. Um, but again, if that's what happens and they rise and start, that would be bad to me, but the market clearly, right, ignored the last three days of good, st good stuff from a TNX perspective, I mean, good stuff. 
So there's that just to let you, to let you know that, those, that there's some something finally happening in those. Right. So keep an, keep an eye on them. See if the market starts to react to them. And then the VIX, I'm sorry, I got the wrong thing. I'm thinking two things at the same time. My bad. VIX, oh boy, I'm struggling on the typing too. So on the VIX, right, I, I talked about this diamond a little bit. I mean, this thing to me, I, I, I don't think you can chart it the, the way you would a normal security, a normal stock uh, or ETF. It's just a different kind of a thing. Um, to me, right, I think, look, they've got the NVDA catalyst later this week. I've been talking about that for, I think, a week or two, maybe, can't remember. But the point is, I was trying to figure out what could they really use as a catalyst to keep this market going. And they, because they always like to hide their maneuverings behind some sort of a news story to justify what they're doing. And that's how I look at it anyway. <clears throat> so the NVIDIA EPS could be something that's pretty big because it's a really big weight at this point in terms of it's one of the mega caps and the space it occupies inside of the space it occupies inside of the space it occupies. So semiconductors, but it's the AI name too, right? Which everyone's gone gaga about again. So having said that, right, that could be something. And remember, we have a big American holiday weekend coming up and the gang often, it almost seems to me like that's almost, not, I hate to say it this way, I shouldn't say it this way, but it's almost always in the back of my mind, let's put it that way, that it's probably, you're probably going to see if they can muster it at all, they're going, you're going to see bullish action try to try to conclude the week. Because it seems to me like the powers that be would rather have recent good performance from the market for Americans to talk about, for people that are tied to the stock market, which a lot of people are through their 401k. So they like to have the, the I guess, I'm guessing the psychology a little bit better rather than dismal. Of course, it doesn't happen every time, but that's, that's to me like the bias. Uh, and so if they can use the NVIDIA and put a, you know, a nice little uh, uh, ex exclamation point on this bullish rally by ending it on a high note later this week, I think that's the, that's the desire. That would be the desire. If news interrupts that, then news interrupts that and it, it can't happen. But I would just say in the absence of bad news, um, maybe this debt ceiling, I don't know something like that. But in the absence of bad news, I would lean that way. If this, but only, of course, if the technicals start shaping up that way. <clears throat> I don't go against what the charts are telling me. So I try to go with it and just keep my myself apprised of risk. But this doesn't look good to me, honestly, overall. It's good that it fought back on a Friday. It's probably doing that in conjunction with the dollar and TNX. So those three things are moving up or try to at least move up all three of them tried to do that last week. Some of them only did it really on Friday in the case of the VIX, but TN, I think TNX was up for nearly every day for the week. So keep that in mind, keep an eye on it. If not, right, if they do end the end the VIX, I'm sorry, end the market on a high note and it has another good week that they're at, managed to squeak out of it, I would think with that three-day holiday, this could get really smashed. I mean, at, at, right now it's barely one point off of the low. So you could maybe revisit the low or even have a lower low. So just keep that in mind, right? Because if you've got, if you've got, you're in something and you roll out to post Memorial Day weekend, uh, you want to uh, probably maybe put a spread on temporarily before vol gets wrecked in that scenario uh, so that you can mitigate your theta over the weekend. I wouldn't wait till 359 Eastern on Friday to do that if you get what I mean. But anyway, that's, that's my little VIX commentary that I could share. <clears throat> Maybe that helps somebody out here. And then I wanted to really talk about things we sometimes talk about. Those would be things like IYR. So for the record, Ryan and I have short positions on. We're bearish in IYR. I think the charts are still bearish in IYR. This to me is an, a, a problem area. I've got pretty sizable positions on in this thing for what I do because I'm kind of in a tough spot when it comes to really active trading because I'm busy with a lot of responsibilities for market rebellion that I prioritize of course is my top priority 
Um, but this is a strategy that right now that we have on that's not that aggressive at the moment. We plan to get much more aggressive with it when we think the time is right. Um, so I'm a bear in there. Um, and I'm a, again, to me, this and some of my other bearish positions <clears throat> are kind of hedges against the long-term risks that I see building, hoping that, right, if I do have that, it'll cushion the blow overall in other things that I'm still long in, <clears throat> excuse me. So anyway, um, this, right, downsloping SMAs uh, had a rough weekend when, when the market managed to do well. Um, maybe it has a higher low that it's building versus this low, maybe, but it did take out the lows of this range right? So maybe they try to turn it back up. I mean, that would probably be a good thing. But to me, I've got an idea in the services. I've got my own on. Brian does as well. So yeah, I think this is a concerning area and there's a lot working against it technically as I look at it. And the other thing that's interesting, we usually take a look at these sort of together like we're doing now because they kind of go in and out of uh, fashion, in and out of vogue. And here's your LQD. So I think this is like the, the corporate bond ETF. Right, and I think this is the good stuff. That's not the HYG kind of high yield stuff. So these these are, I think, I think supposed to be your higher rated corporate bonds, that kind of thing. These are not looking all that wonderful, right? This investment in those uh, in those bonds, uh, this ETF that's trying to replicate that kind of performance, this d d doesn't look good, and also. Right, the uh, sorry, the uh, HYG, the high yield bonds, they also do not look all that wonderful as well. So, you've got, I think, IYR, you've got uh, the two lumber ETFs, uh, these are somewhat related, right, with real estate, even though we're talking it's a real distant relationship <laughs> between certain commercial real estate and this and that. But you get the idea that there's just a lot of concern out there with these things. And these are big deals. You know, the commercial real estate is a big deal. Uh, residential real estate as a whole is a big deal. Uh, lumber not doing very much. You know, to me, we're being told things are still great. People are still buying. But the way that credits, uh, the way that prices are remaining sticky, the way that rates are not, to we, as we know now, we're, they're not completely done going higher. Um, and people are tapping credit more and more to keep their lifestyle intact, or maybe out of absolute necessity, which is even sadder. Uh, this is, you know, these are just concerning signs that I would say are out there. I still think the trade we have on here could be interesting. It started on its way, but eventually, right, with what they were doing with the market, they were able to kind of keep it from falling further. But yeah, it has to take out the 20 there in light blue before, you know, I think it can clearly before it can do more. And I really wouldn't worry about it unless it can do that. I would try to let it breathe. Uh, if it does that, you could hedge it, close it. Um, but some people might not even be in it anymore because it did trigger here. Hopefully some traders took a little bit of profits or did a little bit of a roll, but then it, it just hasn't done much, um, much downside work since then but still worth keeping an eye on. So some people might already be out of it by now, but if this starts taking out lows again, I, on, I would be ready to go back into it because I just have a problem with its charts and have a problem with it kind of in the macro sense. So I think that's a problem, but those, those areas look concerning. Um, and the summary would be, right, we got a little bit more risk. We got a little bit more risk on, but a lot of key sectors are still not firing right? A lot of the key sectors we talked about are still not firing. The, the, the NVIDIA thing, the debt ceiling thing, you know, those are two biggies that are obviously known coming into the week. Um, maybe some of these other sectors would start to catch up a little bit more, maybe. But as of right now, you know, XLF, XTN, it's still mu a muddled picture that's not, <clears throat> not predominantly bullish yet. And that to me is another warning sign. Uh, but Again, nothing may happen if the VIX, um, if this market does the normal pre-holiday thing, NVIDIA delivers the goods, Wall Street seals clap uh, without end, and they pin this thing on a new high, pin a new high on this market, close out in front of this long holiday weekend that's upcoming. 
Um, that's not a pr prediction. I'm just saying that is a scenario that I have to run out here for us because that's what I've seen so many times in my career. Um, news can always derail that. Maybe even with the news, they can't do what I'm thinking they're likely to do. But that's probably my most uh, likely scenario at the moment. And I just don't think it looks good across the board. So still narrow. Uh, but remember, right, you can say, well, this is narrow and Apple's 7% of this, and that's the only reason why. But that's the thing, you know, the components and the weightings are the components and the weightings. And so even if the Qs or the XLK or the SPY are going up only due to this, it's still, that's still part of the calculation, right? So it might be dangerous historically where you can't really have such narrow leadership from the same old names that are usually people will say that a new bull market is led by new names. So maybe this doesn't work, but at the same time, it's, it is what it is. You can't fight against it, you know, yet until we start to see some signs that has, has, has cracked, right? And that might come this week if it can't hold, the cues can't hold the breakout and so on and so forth. But the commodities, the, the oil, the lumber, the, 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 the copper, nothing special to kind of negative. Um, as we saw with lumber you know, near the lower end of the range, these, these other ETFs we took a look at, nothing great. But there was a little risk on where XLP fell while XLY lifted. And some other sectors came back a little, but really still heavily concentrated in XLK, XLC. So I think I'm going to end on that note. Um, that's where things are at the moment. Remember, don't forget about that uh, NVIDIA thing. That's a big deal. The debt ceiling could maybe continue to wreak havoc with uh, and Fed commentary in speeches could continue to wreak havoc at times. Have your calendar in front of you. Know what's coming out. As painful as it is, have Bloomberg on somewhere behind you, uh, preferably in, uh, in your office or wherever you're trading from. This way you won't get blindsided by missing out on some developing news. But overall, right, it's kind of more of the same, but with at least a few new wrinkles this week. So I hope something that I've shared with you helps you out this week or sometime in the future. I want to thank everyone for tuning in and uh, everyone have a great week and a uh, great holiday weekend next weekend. And thanks to all those vets that made it possible.